greeting students. Uh, this is the beginning of an experiment we're gonna try. I'm gonna try to give you the notes in short videos and I'll try to keep them fairly short but they're still you know we got to move along with the content and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but that way we can kind of keep doing the more dynamic and fun and interesting aspects of social studies while kind of moving along with the textbook and and then if you have questions, if there's concerns, we can follow up with that in class and we won't feel hopefully quite so crunched for time all the time. So this is sort of going to be your homework. You're going to watch the little video. If you have, you might have a little question here or there to do. Um, it'll be keeping you accountable for this aspect of social studies and then moving the course along we'll have the odd quiz here and there and it should really i'm hoping it really works but if at any point it's not working for you you've got questions you've got concerns just come and let me know what i'll try to do there will be the video i will include the powerpoint so if you kind of miss something and you want to go back you can get it but i would really strongly encourage you to take notes as we're going write things down it's not enough to just download the notes and then just say hey i learned everything because chances are good you're not learning everything unless you're kind of putting a little bit of effort in and that little bit of effort is actually writing down some notes. So we're going to start off today uh, picking up where we've sort of left off. There will be a bit of a review to hopefully kind of refresh your memory as to what we were talking about before, but today we're talking about the Upper Canada Rebellions. We've already talked about the Lower Canada Rebellions. I hope you remember some of that but today it's upper canada so we're talking english people uh if by the end of today's little video you do not know who this guy is um you need to go back and start over this is william lyon mckenzie if you remember we've talked about him already um he's extremely handsome check out that sweet neck beard uh he's really important in this whole situation so uh there's a few names and faces that you should know in canadian history this guy is one of them. All right, so let's get started. If you recall, <laughs> I hope you remember, uh, the situation in Canada in the 1830s was not super great if you were kind of the average everyday citizen. Uh, if you can, uh, can remember way, 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 way back, uh, your propaganda posters, the average person had the ability to elect the legislative assembly, but the legislative assembly didn't have a whole lot of power. They were kind of pushed around and, and, and poo-pooed and their ideas weren't listened to by the people with the real power who were appointed uh, in the executive council and legislative councils. So those guys tended to be richer and wealthier and, and they had all the power and that really sucked. So. Uh, if you recall, in Lower Canada, people were getting angry and starting to rise up, and the same situation was happening in Upper Canada. So, in Upper Canada, the poor folk were just, they were frustrated. They didn't have uh, a fair representative government. Um, same situation as in Lower Canada. And so, in Upper Canada, it was that group called the Family Compact who was running everything, and in uh, Lower Canada, it was the Chateau Clique. Uh, in both cases, it was rich, powerful, wealthy people, and they were making the decisions. That got really frustrating. So the, the poor people started to uh, agitate for, for action and then still not getting any results. Finally, they felt the need to take up arms. Um, in Lower Canada, if you remember correctly, that got suppressed pretty quickly. It broke out into violence. Uh, the the lower canadian rebels they were not very well organized and they were put down by organized actual troops but this gave an opportunity for upper canada to then launch their own rebellion so um if you remember there were real support for the lower canadian rebels uh people in lower canada were frustrated they were they were french speaking they felt that the the people making the decisions were kind of pro-english and pro-english government and and so they were pissed off they took arms and and they were ready to go in upper canada yes there were some people who were ready to fight 
but it wasn't as big of a population. It wasn't as as many people. Uh, generally, there were a lot of people who were like, well, you know, things aren't could be worse. And and of course, there was the fact that many people in in Upper Canada were kind of pro English. That's why they came to Canada in the first place. Um, if you remember, a lot of people were loyalists. They were loyal to the British government. Uh, they actually fled the American Revolution uh, and came to Canada because they felt a connection to Britain. So when this whole rebellion starts, they're like, mm, this, no, this isn't me. This isn't my thing. So here's our friend, William Lyon Mackenzie. So William Lyon Mackenzie has been advocating for quite some time to kind of challenge and oppose the, the current status quo in, in Upper Canada. So he... He's got the support of a whole bunch of rebels, and what they really want is democracy, kind of like what America has. Um, so in the United States, the United States has kind of established this example for the rest of the world as to what democracy could look like, and it seems pretty appealing, and William Lyon Mackenzie is pushing for that in Canada, and some people think it's a great idea. But a lot of people coming into Canada didn't think it was such a great idea. They actually thought that America wasn't so good. They were kind of a weak country, and they were more connected to Britain. And at this time, Britain is the world's most powerful nation. Uh, it, If you wanted greatness, Britain was the way to go. Um, keep in mind at this time... America was this tiny little place um, that was kind of beginning, and they didn't have a whole lot of economic power. They didn't have a whole lot of political power. They were just sort of an idea, this democratic country out there. Um, so William Lyon Mackenzie's ideas were not super popular. Um, and so... As William Lyon Mackenzie's trying to organize his rebellion against this non-democratic Canada that he's seeing all around him, uh, he he decides he's like, okay, we're gonna get weapons, we're gonna get, we're gonna arm some troops, we're gonna rebel, while the forces of Upper Canada are over there dealing with the Lower Canadian rebellions. So all those troops march down to Lower Canada. Now's our chance. And so he's got this brilliant idea that they're gonna storm the town of York which grows up to become the city of Toronto. Um, so, yeah, once upon a time, Toronto was actually called York. And so he's going to take his rebels, they're going to go storm York, they're going to capture the weapon supplies that are there, and they're going to take the governor prisoner. This is the brilliant plan. And so this little plaque here is actually uh, commemorating sort of the... the rebellion's beginning and it's all going to take place th at this place called montgomery's tavern so the idea is they're going to go to montgomery's tavern they're going to meet there and then they're going to march and then they're going to take the troops on they're going to capture these supplies and then they're going to kidnap the governor and convince him somehow that they're going to they need to become a democratic country it's not the greatest plan if you really think about it but it seemed like it could work, I guess, just take advantage of the idea. It, it was probably the sort of thing where it's like, okay, hey, the troops are gone, now's our chance. We gotta act now, whether our plan is brilliant or not, now's our only chance that we're gonna have this kind of an opportunity. So, uh, now we get to the thing called the Battle of Montgomery's Tavern, and when we say the Battle of, um, th this is very, let's just, let's be, totally totally honest when it comes to history people do tend to like battles battles are interesting there's war there's fighting there's passion there's like things are about to happen it's these like these hot moments in history that we can like talk about and look at um there aren't a whole lot of these when it comes to canadian history so we're gonna the the very few that we have we have to look at despite the fact that the few that we have are really, really kind of embarrassingly small and 
not really that significant when you look at the grand scheme of history. You know, we're like, we're not talking about like Gettysburg and the, the Civil War and the the American Revolution or even the French Revolution or you know Napoleon and Waterloo. Our battles are not that big, but those that we have, they're kind of interesting. So we've got William Lyon Mackenzie. The idea is they're going to march from Montgomery's Tavern, and there they're going to go down Young Street, which, if you've ever been to Toronto, you've probably heard of. And along the way, they do encounter some remaining soldiers. And they fire at the soldiers, the soldiers fire back. And if you know anything about guns at this time, you have to stop to reload. It's a very slow process. You got to get out your little ramrod. You got to put the little bottle in. You got to pour in the, or not the bottle, the bullet in, and then you got to pour in your gunpowder. And it's it's a slow process. And so while they stop to reload, uh, the first row of of not troops but rebels, they stop to reload. Uh, the guys behind them are like, oh no, they've been shot and killed. It's it's terrible and. I don't really know how that happens, but I guess if there's this long period of nobody shooting and a bunch of guys crouching down, maybe that's that's what it looks like. So the guys in the back turn around and kind of abandon the battle. And as they're marching back, they get attacked by more troops and they get defeated. And that is the end of the Battle of Montgomery's Tavern. So it's just... It's a really disorganized mess. What else can I say? It's it's a pretty small battle if you think about it. If you compare this to, you know, other battles in history. It's a whole bunch of rebels marching down a street. They screw up. They get put down by a tiny number of troops. The end. Um, you can go to the site of the Battle of Montgomery's Tavern. And you can see this plaque, and it'll be really interesting. So this is just the, the slide we looked at before. Don't freak out. Okay, so as this little wonderful picture shows us, hundreds of rebels leave Montgomery's Tavern and march down Young Street. Hundreds. Okay, there you go. So there were hundreds of troops, and then the battle ended. Pretty short rebellion. And so as they flee, so all these different people, they're, they're abandoning the battlefield. Uh, some of them get captured. Some of them just run away. They, they don't want to be held for treason. And so um, they kind of disperse all over the place. And even William Lyon Mackenzie, he flees. And he flees disguised as a woman. And he goes to the United States where he hides and continues to kind of send out messages and support this idea of rebellion and and kind of send out papers and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this proclamation, as sent out by the governor of Upper Canada, is to denounce the rebels and actually have them all captured and arrested uh, so they can be held for treason. Um, there there was an offer for, for rewards. There were a thousand pounds to capture these rebels, and many people were actually captured. William Lyon Mackenzie wasn't captured because he was off in the U.S., but many of them were. And uh, it wasn't very good. If you got captured, if you were found to be one of the rebels, uh, it was considered treason. You were going against the queen. You were going against your country. Um, you would be held as an example. And so uh, British law in the 1800s was really harsh. It was meant to deter crime. So if you were a criminal... Um, if you were found guilty, you would be used as an example to make sure that this could never happen again. And so these guys were, were insurrectionists. They were leading an insurrection against the government. And this was a thing that was punishable by death. And so the major leaders who were caught, they were publicly hanged where everyone could see. And that sent a message to everybody that you didn't rebel against the government. That if we were going to have a civil society, people had to be punished and punished severely. And so 
the leaders were executed and then other re rebels were gathered and it was determined that the best solution for them we didn't need to kill them what we could do we could use them for the the British Empire and so they were shipped off to countries like Bermuda or Australia uh, as punishment and there they became slaves if they survived the trip. And so the trip was going to be bad. Uh, they would be chained. They didn't have a bathroom. They didn't have the ability to move around. They were There were no windows. It was, it was an unpleasant and lengthy trip. Uh, you would, there was lots of disease spreading. The conditions were awful. And if you did make the entire trip, you got the wonderful reward of becoming a slave and having to work on, um, I guess in Bermuda, probably it would have been a sugar plantation. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much the gist of it. So the Upper Canadian Rebellions, they were very short-lived, led by William Lyon Mackenzie. They simply took advantage of the Lower Canadian Rebellions. They pushed on, uh, they tried to fight, and they were put down pretty quickly and then the law stepped in to kind of ensure that this didn't happen again. So um, I want to leave you sort of with a thought about this whole thing. So first off, big question, what's this guy's name again? This guy here, he's William Lyon Mackenzie. Now, really important, this is something we need to just like address right now before we move on. There's another guy in Canadian history, he has pretty much the same name. So this is William Lyon Mackenzie. He's the guy with like the sour face and the, the awesome hair um, and the great neck beard. Never forget him. There's another guy called William Lyon Mackenzie King. Yes. So there's William Lyon Mackenzie and then there's William Lyon Mackenzie King. Uh, William Lyon Mackenzie King is on the, I'm trying to remember, I think he's on the $100 bill or it might be the $10 bill. Oh, geez. Um, anyway, or maybe it's the 50, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, William Lyon Mackenzie King is Prime Minister of Canada in the 20th century, not the leader of rebellions in 1837 the upper canadian rebellion in 1837 two totally different guys basically the same name just to confuse the crud out of you so please 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 do not get those two confused um if you want to look up william lyon mckenzie king you can and that'll help kind of clarify for you that there are two different guys with practically the same name okay so here are some questions i just two questions i want you to think about as you move on so it was really important during the British uh, Empire that crimes were punished so that it set an example so that other people wouldn't want to follow uh, it and commit the same crime. And so uh, crimes had to be punished severely. You had to either be executed or you might be enslaved or you might be sent to prison for life. It was to set an example so that this would not happen again. We still do this somewhat. Can you think of what crimes those are that we still do this for? Um, what crimes do we have where the punishment is quite severe to set an example so that other people don't do it? The other question I want you to think about is when we think about prison and the prison system. The prison system is fairly complex and it covers a whole lot of different crimes from theft to um, enslavement of another human being, unlawful imprisonment. Uh, it can cover all kinds of things, drug offenses, um, corruption, uh, treason, all kinds of different things. So. Is there any other purpose for prison than to punish and deter crime in our society? Give that some thought. Uh, it might be something for us to talk about in a future class. We can kind of discuss this. We could maybe look at some of the examples you come up with. So give it some thought. And um, please let me know how this little video works for you, if this is going to be a, a thing that we can do moving forward keep me posted um that's it so please be able to identify william lyon mackenzie king know the difference or not oh shoot shoot go back 
rewind, be able to identify William Lyon Mackenzie, period. Not William Lyon Mackenzie King. Um, be able to identify the difference between the upper and lower Canadian rebellions, and um, that should be good enough.